So AI is already here, before even chat GPT. The technology of large language model is actually existing. I mean, you look at it this way, right? Suddenly after chat GPT, how is it possible that all these tech giants from the Americans, the Chinese, the big and the small, are launching all these large language model and generative AI? Because the technology all about is that. Why you don't see it is because everyone is holding back because these are big investments, right? They are not certain and unsure what is the market uptake going to be. But then, ChatGPT has given, in a way, a market test and survey, free of charge for everyone. And when everyone realized that the adoption is going to be massive, so there's a rush in investment to deploy yeah. that AI workload, right? That's right. To try to capture the market in generative mm. AI. But all this while, AI has been applied in many, many circumstances that we don't see. It's actually existing in our day-to-day -day life. I'm not sure you watch these uh, killer robots on Netflix. Uh, not yet. <laughs> oh, okay. So to all the listeners, if you have not watched, please watch it. Mm. And that answers a very simple question, is AI here to stay? Right? Because one of the, the, the content inside is very interesting. They were taking the simulation data from all the fighter pilots, mm. train the AI, and they use a real fighter pilot to fight the, the AI itself. Initially, the AI didn't really trump, but over time, the AI was winning more than 99% of the time. So think about it, the war of the future doesn't even need a pilot to, to fight. You're going to deploy AI. It's going to be AI against AI. Uh, that's right, yeah. Some people are All saying right. that, yes, so exactly. If you look at it, downstream business application, mm. everything, it will be a lot of AI against AI. Mm -hmm. So personally, I think AI is here to stay. It has all the while been here, just that it's in the limelight and spotlight now, uh, oh, I and see the adoption what you mean. will even be higher. Okay, so um, so in terms of um, the expectations then uh, when it comes to enterprises, uh, you know, using data centers, do you see that the current iteration of AI is going to result in an exponential, you know, in terms of expectations? I would say so, yes. Right, I believe okay. all the bots are asking, all the enterprises, the companies, what are you doing about AI? How, how do you think are the use cases and what are the differentiation you can apply to the business? So I think all aspects in terms of, you know, how can you do things smarter, faster, more efficient, I think there's basic things that AI can easily resolve in many, many aspects of business. Okay, so, um, so when we talk about AI, right, staying on this kind of topic, right, um, and looking at the different types of data centers, so we, you know, um, before COVID, obviously a lot of people have on-prem, right, <laughs> and then, we, then there's a shift of migration onto cloud, and now we are in the AI era and then moving on to Web3 and distributed storage, distributed processing, right, all this. And then, of course, in the background, there's also um, a lot of talks about high-performance computers, quantum computers. So when it comes to couple data centers, what are the kind of use cases that you are you know, using for your data center um, that is different from, say, you know, the quantum and the high-performance computers of this world? Well, I would say uh, every data center provider targets the slightly different segment. That's right. right? So. There are different segments of so-called data centers, but what Kappa is focused on uh, are really the wholesale co-location, we name it that way, to supply data center capacity to hyperscalers and big tech companies. Mm -hmm. So we go on wholesale, provision on that. So what we focus on are really, you know, being able to understand each because their requirements are slightly different. That's right, cost. yeah. So understanding what is the requirement and be able to have the engineering capability mm -hmm. to deliver the design at the cost, at the service level, and at the location and the requirement they need us to deliver for them. And speaking about location, and data, uh, Capo Data Center has different locations. So can you share with our listeners, our audience, what are the considerations that you know you take into account when you select locations for your to host your data center? Well, the number one question to answer is: uh, Will any of my target customers want that location? Ah, right. right. I see. Right? That's okay, very okay. important. Right. And if that question is a yes, then the rest of the criteria has to come in. For example, oh, data center. One of the most important thing is power. Mm. Right. For the kind of data center I want to deliver, is it a cloud, is it an AI which is higher power density, 
do I have the sufficient power from the grid that I can draw from? Mm. So that's num the second question. And third, of course, water, right? You need water to cool, mm. such high heat load. So will the supply of water, you know, be there for me to, to be able to... And then I think, of course, very important is connectivity. Right. Well, do I do, am I near somewhere that I can tap into sufficient network backbones and infrastructure right, right, to connect the multi diverse path to my data? Okay, right, okay. Um, and then, of, uh, I think some are also starting to ask questions about what you, are you doing about sustainability, right? So, can you talk <laughs> a little bit about you know, some of the technologies that you are exploring? So, there's multi aspects to it. I think the first step that to be a responsible data center is to drive efficiency. Right? Data center measures efficiency using a matrix called PUE. It stands for Power Usage Effectiveness. So it's always one point something. So the one, for example, 1.3 PUE means 0.3 of the power delivered to the data center is wasted. Wasted either by transmission losses or mostly cooling. Right? Too much to cool. So one is the theoretical limit of the most efficient. So first thing is to really drive a design and operation of a data center to be as low as PUE as possible. But second, my opinion, and everyone knows, even that one is a huge one, mm. big one. So when you draw that type of energy from a grid that has carbon emission, you are actually emitting carbon. So sustainability becomes the big question. How do we tackle the big one? So I believe data center needs to really look at how to partner with other industries in the renewable energy uh, okay. and energy transition industries to see how can we effectively tap on renewable energy right, to, so that we, do, uh, uh, we can deliver as green energy as possible for the data center to power up. And uh, at the same time, I believe this is where the location becomes very important. If you are then be able to source a location that somehow has new renewable power connection easily to your data center, then that's another plus point again.